Welcome to Nursing 342 Medical Surgical Conditions in Childhood. Today we are on session 9 and we are looking at syndactyly and polydactyly. And I am your lecturer for this morning, Madam Samira Ali Mustafa. Session overview. In this session, students will be introduced to syndactyly and polydactyly. These are congenital disorders of fingers and toes. Syndactyly occurs when two or more digits are fused together and polydactyly on the hand when a person has more than five digits. The etiology, the clinical manifestations and management will all be looked at in this session. For our goals and objectives, by the end of this session, the students will be able to define syndactyly and polydactyly, identify the etiology of these conditions, discuss the clinical manifestations, and explain the management. So basically, we'll be looking at syndactyly and polydactyly, what we normally call uh, extra digits for syndactyly and polydactyly, extra digits and syndactyly fusion of the fingers and toes. So these are some readings that you can help you enhance your understanding. So we are looking at syndactyly and polydactyly together. So this is a picture. If you look at the toes, you see that the child has more than five digits, and that is what we call polydactyly. And usually around us, we see children with an extra digit that seem non-functional and hanging on or attached by skin. It is also a form of polydactyly. And then if you look at the picture again, you see that some of the fingers have been fused together. And you see that this one is more central. So when we, go and we come to discuss the types, you see various variations of this. So by definition, polydactyly, as we pop properly call extra digits, is the supranumeracy of fingers or toes and usually occur on the ulna or fibular side of the limb. And then syndactyly is the fusion of fingers or toes. So when we come to the prevalence, we have more occurrences of the polydactyly, that is the extra digits, than more occurrences of the fusion together of the fingers and toes, which we call syndactyly. And the various variations are that you have unilateral, where there is one hand or one foot having the fusion or the extra digits. And bilateral occurs, as you saw in the picture earlier, where both hands and foot are affected. And then when it comes to the variations again, when it is fused in terms of syndactyly, it can be fused by membrane. So when it's fused by skin, for example, this is webbing. Or in polydactyly, when you have the extra digits being hanged on of by skin, it is also a form of webbing. And then we have the syntosis when it's fused by bony phalanges. And this will require more extensive treatment. So once again, we may have total or rudimentary types, subtypes. We have three main subtypes. We have the ulna or postaxial, which affects the little finger or little two. And then we have the aerial or pretaxial, affecting the thumb or the great toe. So it, depending on which side of the hand is affected, when it is the ulna or postaxial, it is a lateral side. And then here, we have the radial or the pretaxial when it's affecting the great thumb, or if it's the two, uh, then the great two. And then the central part when the fusion is occurring at the middle or the extra digits is occurring between the adjacent fingers of the hands or toes. So here we are saying that extra digit may be partially developed and attached by skin or it may be fully developed and attached by bone. I think we have said this, and this is for emphasis. So polydactyly can occur alone, that is in isolation, 
or what we may look at as non-sporadic occurrence not associated with any form of syndrome. Because most of the time, or some of the time, it also occurs as an aspect of a genetic syndrome. And we have this occurring in trisomy 13. So this is an example. And here I'm asking you, what do you observe? It seems normal. So this should tell you that at best, when we're examining the newborn, if care is not taken, some of these things will be overlooked. So we're saying that it may be sporadic or, you, or it may occur as an inherited auto, autosomal dominant manner. So we'll be looking at a case and we'll see what goes into that. Prenatal ultrasound help us to make this diagnosis and then x-ray will also help us to know the extent in terms of fusion, whether it is bony or membranous. The treatment required is indicated mostly for, for cosmetic purposes and for psychosocial reasoning, because some cultures have various beliefs surrounding this. And so in order to prevent the child from being stigmatized, depending on what the cultural beliefs are, we want to give treatment. And then depending on the extent of the development that is causing the attachment, it may require a very simple procedure like just tying with silk. Here we have 4040, 40, so 40, just tie the extra digit off if it is membranous. But it may also require extensive surgical procedure. And usually this is done between 9 to 12 months. I have this case for you to consider and think through. A two-week-old boy was born with well-formed extra digits on both hands and feet. The extra digits on the hands were attached by a narrow band of tissue to the lateral base of each little finger. The father's paternal grandfather, great-grandfather, and cousin also had extra digits at birth. Why do we make this observation? Why is it that there seem to be family history to this? Why is family history important here? Take time to consider this and try your hands on answering this question. So this is the end of our presentation.